morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Sorry about that. Limitless Church, how's everybody doing today? Church, y'all doing good? Happy Easter to everyone today. Man, we are so excited to be in the house of God this morning. If you are new today, we want to thank you so much for being in the house of God. Amen. Who knows the significance of today? Anybody know out there? Amen. We're so thankful for Jesus that over 2,000 years ago, our King, our Savior, He died for all humanity. He died for every single one of us right but it wasn't over at the death of Jesus because three days later he resurrected to life again and now we are resurrected with the king of kings amen amen so we want to celebrate today so with all you got can you just give some praise to the king of kings this morning as we praise him amen come on y'all ready church
talking to the father one day and he says you know what father I'll die for them even though they might not deserve it even though they might not love me back even though they might reject me I'll die for them because I love them I'll give them my life I'll die so they can live and so what I want us to do today I want us just to lift our hands right there where you're at and just thank him for that for giving his life for shedding his blood for you the worst death in human history a king of the universe yet taking the place of a servant of a human to die for someone that might not accept him today and people ask me all the time Josh why do you serve Jesus and I say this is why because he gave me his whole life where would I be without Jesus where would I be without Jesus come on church can we just lift our hands as we sing this one more time just say that right there where you at Jesus where would I be without you where would I be without you Jesus
I thank you that you make them white as snow today, God. We didn't deserve it, but you took our place on that cross. That should have been our punishment, Jesus, but you took our punishment, and so we give you praise, and we give you honor. Come on, church, can we just give Jesus the biggest praise? Come on, you can do better than that. He gave his life up for you. Come on, you can do better than that. Limitless Church, happy Easter. Come on, aren't y'all glad to be in the house of Jesus today? I am so excited, so thankful this morning. We just want to thank you for being here with us at church today. You could be anywhere in the world, any other place, but you're here with us today. And I believe that God has a plan for your life. So we're going to do what we do best. I want you to find two people that you've never met before. Give them a high five, a hug. Welcome to Limitless Church. I'm Justin and I serve on the production team. The vision of our church is to lead people to encounter Jesus and live out God's limitless purpose through daily partnership with the Holy Spirit. If this is your first time with us, we can't wait to meet you. Text the word HOPVIP to 94000 so we can get to know you. You can even fill out a connect card from the seat in front of you and return it to our VIP table on your way out for a free gift. Limitless Connect is your first step to joining and serving at Limitless Church. But it's about more than membership. It's about knowing God more, discipleship, and community. For more info, text HOPCONNECT to 94000. Here at Limitless Church, we honor God by giving our first and our best through tithes and offerings. There are several ways you can give. Text GIVE7 to 94000 and click the link. Online at LimitlessChurchSA.com slash give. You can give in person by using the boxes on your way out or send by mail. You can follow us on social media at Hop Church SA to stay encouraged and get updated with our latest events. You may also subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch up on all of our latest series and sermons. If you have little ones ages 5 to 12, we would love for them to join our Limitless Children's Church upstairs. We also provide a nursery for world changers for and under. We would also like to remind you to silence all cell phones. The message will begin shortly.
What is going on? Happy Easter. And we just, we just thank you so much for being a part of Limitless Church. Actually, today is our official relaunch service as Limitless Church. Come on. And of course, we, we honor what came before us. My dad started this church 33 years ago as House of Prayer Church, and he's not, be, he's not able to be with us. Um, the devil has really attacked his health, but we believe that even Jesus and the Holy Spirit can resurrect his body, you know, his health. Amen. So, uh, uh, of course, I want y'all to keep lifting him up in prayer. Um, we exist to lead people to encounter Jesus and live out God's limitless purpose. You have a limitless purpose. Turn to your neighbor and say, you have a limitless purpose with the Holy Spirit by being in partnership with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Let's pray. Holy Spirit, we just invite you in this place. This is your house. This is your service. These are your people. This is your church, God. And we just open up our hearts to receive the life-giving gospel today. We love you, Jesus, and we thank you for the sacrifice that you made on that cross. The death, burial, and resurrection of our Savior so that we could have life. We love you, Jesus. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, and everybody shouts, amen. Today, I just... I want us to leave here with a greater understanding of the significance and the gravity of what Jesus did. I mean, sometimes we hear it so many times like, yeah, he died on the cross. But today, I want us to leave here with the revelation of what Jesus did. Amen? John 3.16, and most of y'all are familiar with this scripture, and this is actually out of the message translation. It says, this is how much God loved the world. He gave his son, his one and only son, and this is why. So that no one need be destroyed. But by believing in him, anyone, that includes you. Turn to your neighbor and say, that includes me. Anyone can have a whole and lasting life. Mark 16, 5 through 6. When they entered the tomb, they saw a young man clothed, clothed in white robe sitting on the right side. The women were shocked. But the angel said, don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified but he isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Look, this is where they laid the body. And I, and I had this thought. When Jesus was laying, his body was laying lifeless in the darkness of this tomb. It was the Holy Spirit that rolled away that tomb. It was the Holy Spirit that brought Jesus back to life. It's the same Holy Spirit that is here today with us. Amen. Do y'all believe that? It's the same Holy Spirit that wants to be invited into every part of your life. The same Holy Spirit that wants to live inside of you and strengthen you and heal your body. Amen. Amen. Romans 8.11 says this, the spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same spirit living within you. So you may say, Pastor, as a believer, I have access to this Holy Spirit. The person that raised Jesus from the dead, I have access to him. Yes. Amen? After God brought, brought um, his, his people out of Egypt and he used Moses, 
he told Moses to make a, a tabernacle where God's spirit would dwell, the Ark of the Covenant, right? And this place was no joke, all right? Like people would die in the presence of God if they weren't right. Have y'all seen Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark? Okay, I don't know if it was that crazy, but people would die in the presence of God because God's presence was so holy. Only the priests could enter into God's presence, and they had to do all these specific duties. They had to wash their hands. They had to uh, offer sacrifices and, and uh, you know, blood and, and cook and all this stuff, and I'm glad that we don't have to do that today because I don't do good with blood. It would be horrible to me cutting an animal up in blood, and I would, be, I would pass out. Good thing we don't have to do that anymore. But if they weren't cleansed, they would die in the presence of God. There's a story where, where David was bringing back the ark back to Jerusalem because it had been captured. And one of his priests tried to steady the ark and, and keep it balanced. And he touched the, the ark representing the presence of God. And he dropped dead on the spot. But because the father gave his son Jesus and Jesus was willing to become the ultimate sacrifice, we don't have to go through all those rituals we ourselves house the presence of God because of what Jesus did. Amen? And we're able to say, God, Holy Spirit, help me today. Holy Spirit, give me strength because of what Jesus did. Amen? We're able to experience God's love because of what Jesus did, his, his death, his sacrifice, his resurrection. But it comes through the form of the Holy Spirit. And it's one thing to, for me to say, hey, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Jesus. And y'all could take my word for it. Or you could allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you and say, I love you. God can speak to you. You can hear God for yourself. Amen. And our prayer today is that people... Don't leave this place without experiencing God's love and God's grace. We're a church that we know that God speaks to anyone. Like, it's not just the pastor. God speaks to the pastor, and I'm just like, y'all hear me, for God speaketh through me. No. God can speak to you in your home, in your car. He could touch you right where you're sitting right now. Amen? You could encounter Jesus for yourself. The Holy Spirit for yourself. And I, I want to, we're going to play a couple of scenes from the Passion. So if there's children in here, I just want y'all to make y'all aware, okay? But I want to go back to a journey. And I, I just want the Holy Spirit, I just, Holy Spirit reveal the sacrifice that Jesus made. Give us revelation, Spirit of God. Our hearts are open to the Holy Spirit. We don't just want this to be another Easter, just going through the motions, but give us revelation, Spirit of God. We open our hearts. Now I want to take us back to a journey 2,000 years ago in the town of Jerusalem, the night before Jesus was to be crucified. In a garden called Gethsemane, Matthew 26, 39, and Jesus is here thinking about his crucifixion. And he says, my father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Luke twenty two forty three. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Mark 14, 34, he told them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Let's take a look at that night in the garden. This is the first time Jesus bled. He was filled with so much stress and anxiety and worry 
over the suffering that was about to take place that the capillaries in his forehead begin to burst and blood begin to run down his face. The mental anguish begin to manifest physically. Mental torment. I don't know if anybody in here, you've ever dealt with anxiety or depression. Anybody can relate to that? Maybe you're going through stress, high stress, high anxiety, depression. Maybe you're being tormented in your mind and you feel like you're about to be crushed by the weight of your situation. Since Jesus went through these same emotions, he feels empathy for us. And his Holy Spirit can come alongside us and strengthen us and help us. Amen? And I know within the last couple of years, I had been dealing with high anxiety that I have never dealt with before in my life. And I was like, what is this? Like, God, like, it was something in my brain that was just turned on, like, danger, 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 and it, it wouldn't turn off. But because of what Jesus did, he healed me and set me free from anxiety, and he could do the same for you. Amen? And I had this thought. Did Jesus battle insecurity in this moment? Did he ever have the thought of, I'm not enough? to take on the sins and the burden of this, this world because he was fully God, but he was also fully man. So he had emotions, but we know he was more than enough. Amen? But how many times have you felt like you're not enough? Can anybody relate to that? Jesus can relate. Amen? Luke 24, 47 and 48. But even as Jesus said this, a crowd approached, led by Judas, one of the 12 disciples. Judas walked over to Jesus to greet him with a kiss. But Jesus said, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? Judas, one of Jesus' close, closest friends, betrays him for money. Man, can you relate being betrayed by a close friend? Man, it's always the people closest to you that can hurt you the most, right? They took him away in chains. They punched him. They beat him. They mocked him. In this time, one of his closest companions in the world denied that he even knew him. In this moment, as he was sitting, standing there, and they were throwing accusations at him, Jesus was completely and utterly alone. He went through complete loneliness so that we wouldn't have to. Amen? Because of Jesus, we never have to be alone. We just call on the name of Jesus, and his Holy Spirit is right there with us. Amen? He was taken to the Roman governor because only Romans were allowed to crucify and execute. And the Roman governor knew, hey, these religious leaders, they just want to kill him because they're jealous. Because the people were drawn to Jesus and not them. So he gave the people a choice. And these people, these crowds, they chose to release a murderer and a revolutionary over Jesus. And they handed him over to be whipped and beaten and scourged. But he did this willingly for you and for me. Let's watch what Jesus willingly did for each and every one of us in this place. Isaiah 53, but he was pierced for our rebellion. He was crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped 
so he so we could be healed. If you need healing in your body right now, I just want you to place your hand on where you need God to, to heal you. We thank you, God, that we are that by your stripes we are healed. We thank you, God. You took those lashings, 39 lashings for our afflictions, God. Not only pain in our physical body, but pain in our emotions. It said he, he was beaten so we could be whole. That means to be okay on the inside, in our emotions. Amen? Healing also takes place on the inside. It's a great miracle when, when somebody is healed physically, and we're believing for a miracle for Apostle Mondo, amen? But also, I believe there's people in here that need healing emotionally on the inside, and that's why Jesus took those lashings so we can be healed, amen? When, when your soul is healed and your heart is healed, that's when we begin to live the abundant life that God has for us. Amen? And that's available to all believers because of what Jesus did. As he was waiting to be crucified, the soldiers put a crown of thorns on his head. Matthew 27, 29, they wove thorn branches into a crown and put it on his head, and they placed a reed stick in his right hand as a scepter. Then they knelt before him in mockery and taunted, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit on him and grabbed him and grabbed a stick and struck him on the head with it. When they were finally tired of mocking him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him again. Then they led him away to be crucified. Do we have that clip of the crown of thorns? The crown of thorns represents that we can have victory in our minds and in our thoughts. When Satan attacks God's people, he targets their mind. He attacks their thoughts with lies. And you may say, Pastor, and people have said this a lot of times, why is there so much bad in the world? Have you ever thought that? Why is there so much bad going on in the world? It's because Satan attacks the hearts and minds of men with lies and deceit. Men who have free will. But we can have victory in our minds as believers because of Jesus' sacrifice. Amen? Because he took those crown of thorns on his head. Matthew 27, 33. And they went out to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. The soldiers gave Jesus mixed wine with bitter gall, but he had tasted it and he refused it. After they had nailed him to the cross, the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. Then they sat around and kept guard as he hung there, and a sign was fastened above Jesus' head announcing the charge against him, and it read, This is Jesus, the king of the Jews. Let's watch how our Lord and Savior took the nails in his hands and in his feet. Bow our heads. And just thank you, Jesus. You're so wonderful, Jesus. Holy Spirit, reveal Jesus to us. Reveal the cross to us, Holy Spirit. Speak to our hearts. Speak to us, Spirit of God. Come on, church. Say, speak to me, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, that you're present, that you're with us, that you're in this place. We love you, God. We love you. We humble ourselves before you. We know that we can do nothing in this life without you, God. 
Our strength comes from you. Our breath comes from you. Everything we have comes from you, God. We love you, Jesus. I just want to take this time. If there's anybody in this place that you've never accepted Jesus in your heart, this is so important. This is the most important decision you will ever make because it determines your eternity and the reason why Jesus died. And it's not by accident that you're here. It's not because someone just happened to invite you or you just happened to find this church. It's because the Holy Spirit drew you here. The Bible says nobody comes to the Father unless he draws them. And if you're in this place, and there's nothing to be ashamed of. We all need God. We've all sinned. We're all sinners. I need grace every day. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you've been in known God for 20 years. We all need God's grace every day. If you're in this place and you've never accepted Jesus Christ in your heart, and you want to make that decision today, and this is not just going off emotion. This is not just going off because you just saw the, the passion of the Christ. This is because the Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now. If you've never accepted Christ in your heart as your Lord and your Savior, or maybe you have and you've fallen away and you want to receive him right now, I just want you to just raise your hand. I just want you to raise your hand. Nobody looking around. Okay, I see your hand. Anybody else? Anybody else? I see your hands. I see your hands. Anybody else? Anybody else? Amen. Amen. This is why Jesus came. Right here, right now. When we say yes to Jesus and we receive his Holy Spirit, his Holy Spirit power in our life so we can live empowered. And Christianity is not just trying to live perfect or trying to discipline ourselves to not do wrong. But Christianity is about having a relationship with the Holy Spirit and allowing him to empower us each and every day of our lives. Because of what Jesus did. We're able to have that. Let's all repeat this prayer. And those of you that raised your hand, just pray this prayer from your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for the cross. I ask you right now to come into my heart. Wash my sins away with your blood. I receive your Holy Spirit. I receive your grace. I receive you as Lord and Savior of my life. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, just make that real between you and God right now. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for these precious people, God. That's what it's about. It's about people. Coming to know God. We just want more of your presence, God. Nothing else satisfies in this life, God. But you. We want to encounter you more and more each and every day, God. We want to partner with you, God, every day of our life. And we thank you, God, that your spirit brings freedom and liberty to our life. We don't have to suffer from depression. We don't have to suffer from anxiety. We don't have to suffer from mental illness, God, because you came and you paid the price for our freedom. And we just thank you for your anointing in this place. You're so worthy, Jesus. Come on, church, can we just tell him that he's worthy? You're worthy of our praise, God. You're worthy of our worship. We're so humbled before you, God.
We humble ourselves. We humble our life. We love you, Jesus. Luke 24. But very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb taking the spices they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. So they went in, but they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. As they stood there puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them clothed in dazzling robes. The women were terrified and bowed with their faces to the ground. And the men asked, why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and that he would rise again on the third day. He has risen. Amen. Christ from the dead is here today. Come on, let's all just lift our hands all across this place. The same power that raised Christ from the dead. Think about that. It's here with us and can be in us. We thank you, Holy Spirit. You're so wonderful, Holy Spirit. We thank you that you reveal Jesus to us, Holy Spirit. We cannot know Jesus without you, Spirit of God. And we just welcome you in this place. Touch your people, God. Lord, let them not leave this place without having the revelation of Jesus. Having a revelation of your mercy. Having a revelation of your grace. We just love you, God. And we thank you, God. You're welcome in this place, Holy Spirit. You're so welcome, Spirit of God. You're such a good God. We thank you, Father, for sending your Son. We thank you, Jesus, for giving your life. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here with us. We just give you praise, God. And we thank you for the salvations that took place today. In Jesus' name. Everybody shouts, amen. And like, like we we're saying that we want this church to be, it's, it's not going to be built on, on a man. It's not going to be built on a pastor. It's going to be built on the spirit of God and his presence. And people who know how to get in their prayer closet and seek his face and encounter his presence for themselves. That's what this church is going to be built on, on Jesus, on the rock. Amen. Well, church, thank you for being a part of our Easter Sunday. Um, we have some, some street tacos. Um, the kids are going to get Easter baskets and have a right after church a Easter egg hunt. We have bounce houses. Um, what else do we have? We have a petting zoo coming. Anything else? Merch. We got new limitless merchandise. So pick up a hat, a shirt on your way out. Let's pray real quick before we dismiss. Lord God, I thank you for your people in this house, Lord God. I thank you that these are your people, God. I ask that you just bless their homes, bless their marriages, bless their jobs, Lord God. Their children are blessed. Thank you for unity in this house. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody shouts, amen, amen. Y'all are dismissed, church. Y'all have an amazing Easter.